Michelle from Michelle's Home and Garden. Okay, so we got a new project we're starting. Now this is going to go into next spring, but I wanted to get a jump start on it this fall, and it's a gorgeous November day today. So I thought this would be the perfect time to get this started. Now if you can see behind me, we have the garden house shed and we have our regular shed that we actually store all of our garden stuff in. In between the two, two sheds is an open grassy space. Now on the storage shed, I do have a little garden out there that I had showed you this year that I planted the pumpkins in and had some um, zinnias and some sunflowers and different things. Well, I thought it would be nice to have a cut flower garden. And I don't really have a place in the backyard garden. I've got this landscape now and it looks really pretty, but a lot of the flowers this summer, I didn't want to cut and take inside because I wanted to enjoy them out in the garden. So I have been looking online and, and watching other videos and other gardeners and come to the decision that I would really like to have um, a cut flower garden so that I can start planting stuff in the spring that I can cut and take inside to enjoy and also give away to other people for arrangements and then still have my back garden that when I'm out working in it or setting out here looks pretty um, without having to cut the flowers. So let's look at what we're gonna get going out here today in the back garden. So I'm gonna show you right here is the back of the garden house. And then you can see the garden shed over there and the little rose plant. And so I have a pretty large space that I think will make a nice cut flower garden. Okay, so today's goal is just to get them laid out, the garden beds to see spacing. Now we did pick up the dirt this morning for the raised garden beds. I don't know that I'll get it put in today though because I um, want to just see what the spacing is gonna look like. So I picked up four of these from Walmart at the end of season and they are the versatile ground level garden bed that you can arrange in different shapes and so we're going to try these. Now these were half off. I think I, I paid $40 for each one and the regular price was like $79.99. And so no tools are needed and they just slide together. And my husband John is putting them together right now and laying them out. And then let me lay out what I'm kind of thinking what I want to do back here in the garden bed. So over on this side, if I have room, I'd like to put a ground garden bed up against the back of the garden house. So plant some stuff up there, keeping in mind that that's mostly shade because of it being the north side, but have a line of some kind of flowers along there. In the back, I would like to put some kind of privacy um, hedge. I was either thinking evergreen or if I wanted a hydrangea, a line of hydrangeas would be pretty back there, but do a line of some kind of hedge and then have the four different garden beds to plant my cut flowers in. And then I want them in the shape of like a parterre garden and I'll have some kind of um, urn or statue or something like that in the middle of the four. Um, and right now we're just, like I said, we're just in the preliminaries of laying this all out and getting the spacing. I'm thinking I want at least four foot between, um, like for the walkways and between the actual um, raised garden beds. So once I get that spacing, it'll really, de de you know, decide, be the deciding factor of how much space I have on each side of the sheds to work with to have some in-ground garden beds because then I would kind of like on each side of each garden shed to have some kind of garden bed that's similar. Um, would that have like cutting roses in it, have hybrid tea roses that I could cut for flower arrangements and then have different things 
in these four garden beds. Um, I'll have plenty to think about this winter and have plenty of time to look through, you know, magazines, look online, come up with ideas, uh, watch some other videos of uh, people that do have uh, cut flower gardens to see how they lay them out to get more ideas. But I just want to get the beds out today, see what my sizing looks like, and if I could get the get them full of the dirt this fall before we go into winter so that they are ready for spring as soon as um, you know stuff we can start putting stuff out next spring that would be good if I have that jump start and if I get the dirt in them this year I may even have time to put some bulbs in them back here for springtime which would be wonderful so some of the options like I showed you you could do a big rectangle you can do it like we're doing like this and then they show where you take two of them and you do the box like this so you're actually getting four boxes four four squares that you can assemble however you want in the shape that you want and then they did show they don't show it on the box but they showed it that you could do take this box and make one great big long rectangle and I wasn't interested in having it shaped like that. I was more wanting it so I can put something in the middle. Now these are not huge. This will be my like starter, see how I like having a cut flower garden and see how I like having raised beds. And then I may upgrade as the years go on. To, so this is the practice starter set. Okay, so all of the raised beds, all four of them now, are built and I'm just setting them up for placement. Now you can see the two sheds, the garden house and the um, regular shed, and I'm kind of going in between them, keeping in mind that I'm thinking that I'm going to have a hedge in the back, and then I'd like to do um, an in-ground border garden for cut flowers on each side of the shed and then have the parterre uh, raised bed garden in the middle of that and then in between in the very circle have some sort of statue or urn. So I'll probably play with that layout a little bit and decide how I want, how far I want to bring the beds out. So we'll have to see how much space we have, but this gives us a, a rough idea today of the layout and the look of it. And I just wanted to see how that that would look for the cut um, flower garden beds. Now I'm gonna take you up closer before I have dirt or anything in these beds so you can see the size of them. So um, it is pretty, I would say, maybe about two foot across and then I don't know maybe three foot down so they're not huge beds but I think they'll give me a good start for a cutting flower garden and like I said I can expand um, down the road uh, this will get my feet wet so to say and give me a trial to see what I think about having a cut flower garden and um, what I would actually put in these beds for a cut flower garden. So I'm thinking a lot of um, different filler flowers that you would use in arrangements. So we'll see, and like I said, I will play with this layout and probably I'll bring some sort of urn out here in the middle just for now to try it out and see what I think. Cause I tend to be very visual and so I have to see it all laid out before I um, can make the final decision. Okay guys, so we're gonna put the dirt in the flower beds, the raised garden beds. We bought the dirt yesterday and we bought, um, we we're gonna try three bags first and two cubics. So a total of six cubics and see where we're at and if we need more dirt.
know, I am taking some of my planters that I dumped out for fall, the potting soil that was fresh this season, and using that at the bottom. So three bags filled up one side very nicely. So if we can put some potting soil down and then put that raised bed on the top, just for a base, because it's not gonna go down that far. So that's what we're working on right now. see that I broke up quite a bit of my old planters from the pots and I took out the big root balls but I'm just looking at laying a bit base layer because we're just laying it on top of the grass and these are really deep and I'll, I don't need to go down that far so I'm just I mean sometimes you can do wood you can do newspaper, cardboard, different things in the bottom. So I'm just using the potting soil and then we're taking the new garden soil and topping it off. So this is like maybe an inch or two where I can. And also that gets rid of those great big root balls because what do you do with them? Now the actual roots that are left, I am pitching, I'm not saving those and I'm not putting them in the pots. They're filling, they're filling in nicely, guys. And you can see that I'll have four. Here's another one where I took the great big supertunia planter and I didn't have enough to do the littler one. So you can see it's just plain old grass down there. Well, there you have it guys so we have four new beds and I may put I may be putting from the backyard here in the center for now and putting a tree in it we'll see I need to clean it up some but I may plant this up not all four of the boxes but the little boxes I may put some tulips in it for the springtime and get those planted up but we'll see. I have to go through the bulbs today and see which ones I want to use in the back garden and which ones I'll use up here, out here, and get this going. So it looks good. I'm excited. Now this is just phase one because you have to imagine that right in here is going to be planting in the ground. Over there by the shed is going to expand and there's going to be more plantings in the ground there for cut flowers. And then in the back, we'll have some sort of privacy living hedge planted. I'll plant that next spring. And then maybe put something in front of that living hedge. So just more to come as it involves. But this is phase one and I'm so excited. It looks really nice already. Well, thanks for watching today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.